Tonight on Coach Kyle, <laughs> we're going to be talking about escalation, sex, sex escalation, closing. Um, if you guys have been watching the lectures, you watch game 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. I think this is 106 or maybe this is 107. I don't fucking know. I lost track at this point. Make sure you guys have watched all of those lectures in order before watching this. Don't just be like, oh, shit, escalation and closing. Like, let me just jump ahead and watch that one, dude. Don't fucking do that because everything before this point is crucial uh, to make everything I'm about to tell you guys actually successful, okay? So let's just talk a little bit about this. Um, I'm going to go into a little bit of theory um, and a couple things I like to do during escalation. And then after that, I'll probably jump into some experiences, sex experiences, and uh, some failures as well. Some successes, some failures. And I don't know. I guess we'll see how long this goes because I'm supposed to have a client, but maybe I'll just push him back if we're like caught up in this or maybe we'll just do a part two. All right. So I have a bunch of notes written down. A um, couple things I wanted to talk about. So anyway, if you guys have been watching the lectures in order, we're at a point now where we've opened, we've created attraction, we weren't showing too much interest at first, we're dissing, teasing, joking with the girl, eventually at some point she starts showing interest, at which point we moved into some qualification, got to know her, uh, something about the girl other than her fucking physical looks, got to know her on a, a deeper level than that. Um, from there, we kind of built a connection with the girl, and then we either seated a pole and pulled the girl, and now we're at an after party, or we made an agreement to go out onto another date. And at some point, we ended up in privacy with this girl. So that's where this lecture is starting. So I'm just going to imagine we're already back at my house on this very couch right here where a lot of shit goes down. Um, <laughs> so let's take it from right there. Okay? We're back at the house. <sighs> Jesus, there's like so much to fucking cover. There's no way I'm going to be able to do all this in one lecture. So we'll start with this, and I guess we'll just see where it goes. So what do we do? We're back at my house. Let's, let's just imagine we're on the couch. I'm on the couch. I'm hanging out with the girl. Typically, the way I run my dates, uh, I like to either have the date at my house or we end up back at my house after whatever activity we were doing. Okay? Same thing if I met the girl out. We're either going to leave the venue and go to my house or we're going to leave the venue, go to an after party and then come to my house or we're going to leave the venue, go get food and then eat the food or hang out at my house or smoke hookah at my house or have wine and listen to music at my house. We're gonna do some kind of activity at my house other than let's go hang out, like have an activity in mind, okay? Same thing with the date. It's usually, my ideal date, I've, I've discussed this before, it's girl comes over, I cook for us, she brings wine, and maybe we smoke hookah. That's my ideal date. Nice, easy, relaxing, girl's already at my house. I have plenty of time to get her comfortable at my house. So one, one important thing, um, get the girl comfortable with the location that you're going to be having sex. All right. Meaning if I'm going to be, if I'm planning to like have this girl over my house, um, I want her to be in my room before the sex is about to go down. Okay. So typically if she comes over, you know, I let her into the garage, we come in here, I, I show her my room. Uh, ideally your room's fucking clean, by the way, <laughs> show her the room and I'll, I could tell her she can put her bag down in here, take her jacket off, put her, her shoes in here, whatever, you know, have the girl go into the room before you guys are actually going to hang out in that room. You know, let her get comfortable in the room. That's a, that's a big part of this thing. So I let the girl see the sex location, let her get comfortable in the room. Cause what I don't want is us to never go in here and then shit's heating up and then I bring her to this room because then if I'm, if, if she's never been in there and as we're escalating, I just bring her in there, red flags might start to go off in her head about like some shit's about to go down, you know? So I like to let the girl get comfortable in the room. I even have like an old room that's through this door. I'll usually even show her my old room because there was like a bunch of posters and shit in the walls. So I would walk her through that room, show her all the posters, talk about some of the stuff and then bring her back into this room maybe talk about one or two things in the room, get her comfortable in the room. Then we go upstairs and then I make us a quick meal. And while I'm doing that, we're just a little bit of small talk. I start off the date. I start off the vibe, very low pressure. I don't 
bring her into the room and start fucking escalating right away. Same thing if I'm bringing the girl home from the bar. I'm not bringing her into the room and just fucking pouncing on her. Unless we're making out in the car. Some, this will happen occasionally. It's just like super on. I'm driving home and she's making out with me and fucking jerking me off while I'm driving home. Sometimes that happens. And then if, if that's the case, when we get into the room and we're still making out, you know, there are times where we just go right onto the bed and start fucking escalating. It's kind of rare, but it happens. So I'm not going to go too much in depth with that because it's pretty self-explanatory if, if that's what's going on. So let's talk more about this. I get her into the, get her into the room, get her comfortable with the area. We go upstairs, make a, make a small little meal. I typically start off the date or the interaction at home pretty low energy unless it's already on for sex. But if it's not and she's just coming over for a date, it's low energy, just no pressure. I'm relaxed and I'm not in this like what what I'm saying. I'm not pressured to keep the conversation going. I'm just super chill and super relaxed. I might even be in the kitchen cooking up the meal and it's okay if there's a little bit of silence. Like put a little let the girl fucking give the girl an opportunity to fill some of the silence and keep the conversation going as well. Because when you feel pressured to keep the fucking conversation going, it, it just conveys something to the girl that like you haven't done this before or you're nervous or you just don't feel worthy or whatever. So just start it off slow, relaxed. There's no pressure on her. We're just chilling, having, having good vibes. Cook the food. We eat the food down here. Okay. We eat the food in my room. Um, because I'd rather get her comfortable in my room. This is this kind of like setup of my room, by the way. I got this little TV, uh, monitor, speakers, got this couch, got a, like a recliner over there, and then my bed's on the backside. So another good thing to incorporate into your guys' setup, if you can, have shit going on in your room other than just a fucking bed and like a light switch. You know what I'm saying? And a dimmer on for your light is cool too, if you can get that. Um, and I just realized I'm about to get this too, because my light switch is actually outside of the room. It's pretty fucking annoying. I was looking on Amazon. They have these like wireless led lights that you can control from your phone and like change the colors. It's actually pretty fucking dope. So I was thinking about getting them in here. Could be beneficial if you guys don't have a dimmer in your room, maybe get those, get those because like I've been in other, I fucked in my friend's rooms before where it's like, there's just pitch, uh, it's like pitch black or like broad daylight. There's just on or off light switch. And it's kind of uncomfortable for the girl. You want to put the girl in a nice relaxed setting where it doesn't, you want it to be relaxed, but also you don't want it to be so obvious that you're trying to fuck this girl. Meaning if she's just walking in, I don't want it to already be like super dim lit candlelight, romantic R and B playing in the background and me saying, so how you doing tonight? That's, that's too much. You know, like you want to, you want to slowly transition into it. And another thing, ideally, what you want to do is you want the girl to help participate in setting up the seduction, meaning we, we're upstairs, we cook, we come down here, we got the food going. I'm like cutting up whatever the food is or I'm preparing the food. And in the meantime, I'll ask her, hey, oh, here's the wine over here. Why don't you crack open the bottle of wine? Or, hey, I'm going to set up the hookah. Actually, could you light the candle? Or... Um, I got to run upstairs and wash my hands. Actually, uh, Spotify, put on whatever song you want on, on the computer. Let the girl contribute to the seduction. Okay. Let her participate in the seduction. I don't want to be looking like I have an agenda and I'm doing all this shit. When the girl is helping contribute to it, it's like she's participating in it. I'm also going to have her participate in the escalation. It's a fucking mutual thing. It's not me pushing, 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 pushing. Okay. Very important, but it's a subtle, something subtle, but it's something that is, uh, really does help out a lot. So let the girl participate in the seduction. If you can, you have a candle there, or you have some music playing, and you can let the girl pick the music that she wants. Or I typically have the girl bring the wine over. I'm going to cook the meal. She brings the wine over. If that's not the case, maybe I already have some wine here. I'll just have her pour the drink while I'm doing something. Um, or like I'm going to dim the lights just a tiny bit to begin with. Okay, so this is the beginning stages of seduction and creating arousal, which means the girl needs to be comfortable and the girl needs to feel relaxed. Um, and the girl doesn't, and she also doesn't want to feel pressured into anything. The three huge things, guys, because without those, arousal is not going to happen if she's pressured or if she's nervous or if she's uncomfortable or if she feels like you're fucking attacking her and 
just trying to fucking stab her with your dick. It's not gonna, it's not gonna work that way, right? So that's the first thing is let the girl contribute to the seduction. Huge, fucking huge, okay? Um, and you'll see that that's a common theme throughout my entire escalation process, right? So we're vibing, we're we're having. I, I don't want to just talk about the date because like that's one way to have sex. But the other time is like when I'm pulling and I'm bringing girls home. So there's, there's two different kind of dynamics. If I pulled from the club and we get back here, I may not do all of that shit. You know, I'm not going to give her a tour of the whole house. We're just going to fucking come into the room and chill. And the lights will already probably be dim because it's like 2 a.m., 3 a.m. And I may just have her light the candle while I set up the hookah. That's it. We're chilling. We're on the couch. I'm not pressuring this girl into fucking that's the last thing i want is like i already got her home she's already here there's no fucking rush so i'm just chilling i'm chilling but i also want to keep somewhat of a good vibe okay so at some point i'm either gonna have her sit next to me or i'm gonna be somewhat close to her and i'm gonna start thanks for watching guys i hope you learned something if you want more of this type of content or if you're looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching be sure to check out my patreon and until next time coach kyle signing out